Hello everyone, and welcome to Abnormal Innovate. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Evan Reiser, the founder and CEO of Abnormal AI. If there's one thing I've learned as CEO of a cybersecurity company, no one loves corporate marketing webinars more than cybersecurity folks. And so who wants to give it up and give a round of applause for a corporate marketing webinar? Just kidding, okay, so we're, we, I, I do acknowledge some of the cliches here. We're gonna try to make this an abnormal webinar, not a normal webinar. Our goal is to actually bring you some unique takes that are actually valuable and you guys find interesting. If nothing else, help spark some conversation and debate. So we have a not just a abnormal take on webinars, but also an abnormal take on the world and how we like to build products and also build relationships with people like you. We also don't wanna give you a normal take on our view with AI and cyber. So there's kind of three things we're gonna talk about today. Um, one is that we're gonna give, I'm gonna give a bit of my view on the AI state of the union. Second, we're talking about AI's impact on the role of cybersecurity. And then for the last piece, and we'll try to keep it to 10%, we do want to share a little bit about kind of abnormal approach. I admit it's a bit of a commercial for abnormal, but keep it less than five minutes. And what we'll try to do to make it interesting and relevant is go back, kind of tie some of the work we do back into the first two themes. So a little bit about me. Um, my background is not in cybersecurity. Before abnormal, I never worked on a cybersecurity project. I spent most of my career doing behavioral ad targeting. So all those annoying ads that follow you around the internet that kind of drive you crazy, Probably my fault, I apologize, I'm now trying to give it back to the community. Um, I started Fat Abnormal in 2018, and the goal is to really use AI to understand human behavior to go help stop crime. Today we have more than 25% of Fortune 500 companies use us in production, and part of my job is I talk to probably five or 10 CISOs and CIOs pretty much every week on both AI and cyber. And the only reason I share that is not to brag, but to help you give you guys some more context behind what's informing my views as we talk about these topics today. So to begin, I think it's important that we take stock of where we're, at, where we're at in AI. And some of these things are probably obvious, right, to say, and you probably can't join a AI conversation without hearing these three points, but I think it's really important for us to kind of think about what these really mean for the future. So the first we're sitting here, um, about three years, or a little under three years to the ChatGPT launch. Um, and it is profound to see how far we've come. Um, if you went back in time, you told our former selves, all of us be walking around with a magical device in our pocket that can answer pretty much any question at higher quality than any other human instantly and for free. I don't think our former selves would have believed that, right? Today, ChatGPT has over 100 million uh, daily active users, right? Maybe higher across all the other models. So the fact that this technology has come so fast, so furious, it's so you know broadly spread, and it's having a real impact on all of our day-to-day -day lives. That's something that is quite profound and quite you know quite impressive. The, the third piece here is that AI agents are also getting deployed you know, very broadly across enterprises, right? From our company to most of the customers we deal with. What's interesting to me about AI agents is that they're really kind of the second generation, maybe even the third generation of AI technologies. It's a good reminder that AI is more than just chatbots like ChatGPT. There's, real, there's really interesting applications that allow us, them to change how we work, how society operates, and how we kind of live our day-to-day -day lives. The main takeaway from this is that I think historically, we've dramatically underestimated both the level of impact, the opportunity, and the speed of adoption of these AI technologies. And my very strong conviction is that when we look into the future, we're also underestimating AI in three different ways. One is the rate of progress, right? There's technologies that I've seen in our own company that six months ago I thought were state of the art, which now the consensus view for us is that they're already obsolete because they've been replaced with new generations of kind of AI applications. The second thing I think we underestimate is a level of intelligence in these applications, right? Even today, you know, the, the growth rate is getting faster every day. And if we're not there today, I would say in the next, you know, weeks or months, we will be able, you know, AI will be able to answer pretty much every question that we can imagine at the PhD level, you know, level of quality, right? What happens beyond that, it's really hard to imagine even what words could describe. But I think we're dramatically underestimating the level of intelligence that we'll be seeing in the future. And the final piece is I also think we're um, underestimating the impact. Um, AI technologies are going to have a way have a way bigger role in kind of how we work, you know, how we operate, how we communicate, how we do our jobs, and obviously how society functions as a whole. Obviously, that specifically affects our industry and cybersecurity. So, for this next kind of chapter, I want to talk a little about how AI is going to be a disruptor. We all know AI is going to play a big role, and things are going to change. But I think they're going to change in three different categories. One is in cybersecurity, AI can be a big market disruptor in the sense that it can, it's going to change the problem statements that we face every day. Because of AI, there'll be new emergent problems that we have to go solve. The second is AI is a product disruptor. The way we solve both new problems and old problems are gonna fundamentally change because AI has far superior, cheaper, you know, more thoughtful levels of intelligence that are more broadly deployable than what we could have imagined even a couple months ago. 
The final piece is AI is going to be enterprise disruptor. The way kind of we work, you know, day to day, the way we collaborate, the way our businesses operate are really going to change as we see the broader role of AI agents. And all three of these are going to play a major role and for all of us as we do our job in cybersecurity. So as we talk about this, I want to kind of break it down into two pieces. One is I want to talk about the more obvious and maybe consensus, you know, views around how AI is play, you know, playing a role in cybersecurity. And then we'll kind of end with the, the less obvious, maybe the more contrarian views. So on the kind of obvious consensus side, right, um, I think there's three ways that uh, AI is really going to change like the problems we face in cybersecurity. So one is that AI is going to create more criminals, right? There's certainly criminals out there today that would love to be cyber criminals, but maybe they don't know how to code. Right, or maybe they don't speak English, right? They can't write that phishing email or set that cloud infrastructure. That barrier to entry is going to go away. Unfortunately, an AI will actually enable more criminals to become cyber criminals. On top of that, the second piece, the AI is going to enable new um, kind of new level of scale. Obviously, criminals are eager to adopt um, automation, right, of diff using different technologies, whether it's Python scripts or AI applications. Unfortunately, allow every criminal to set up more attacks at a broader scale. And the third piece, which for me is the most worrying, is that AI is going to allow a new level of sophistication for these attacks beyond what we can imagine today. AI is capable of coming, coming up with new forms of deception, new ways to trick us um, that, are, that are quite startling. So I think that we all know this, but you know, AI is going to dramatically kind of increase the cyber risk. And my guess is that's going to go up exponentially in the future. The second category is how AI enables um, us to solve new problems in cybersecurity um, with AI. So as you can imagine, right, you'll hear from us and probably other vendors you talk to or technology providers, there's going to be a whole new batch of AI agents. These AI agents are going to be deployed broadly. They're going to need kind of broad data access. They're going to need to be monitored in new ways, which allows us to do things and protect our organizations in ways that we didn't think were possible. The second thing is all of us individually or on our own teams, we're going to be building our own AI tools, right, whether it's in cybersecurity or in IT. So there's going to be a whole new wave of first-party agents as well, right, that allow us to do things in our business that weren't possible in the past. And all of these AI agents are going to be very data hungry. They're going to need unique access. We're going to be very thoughtful about how we set up the right privacy, compliance, and various controls to make sure the right people and the right agents get access to the right things. So I think AI agents are going to create a new generation of, of applications like inside our environments. And obviously, it's going to be a new frontier um, for us in cybersecurity. I don't think those two things are super far-fetched. And my guess is the majority of you guys on the call you know, will, believe, will agree with that. So for the second section, I want to share some of my more contrarian views, right, that are somewhat speculative in nature. Um, I'm probably wrong in some of these areas, um, but I hope at least you know, some of these uh, opinions and topics, right, spark more conversations and dialogue so we can really think about how AI is going to change how we need to work in cybersecurity to protect you know, ourselves, our organizations, and the broader world. So my first take is that I think current identity security is to be insufficient. If we look at how authentication works, there's no way AI agents are going to be able to use the same 2FA and MFA type tools, right, to authenticate themselves. And how, kind of what the future of machine authentication looks like, that is a kind of a, a, a perpetual problem that definitely needs to be re-examined. I think on the authorization side, AI agents, right, are going to be very data hungry. They won't necessarily work with the same patterns of behavior. And so they can't have persistent access to all these different environments. We're going to have to shift from more kind of rules and heuristic-based approaches for giving privileged access into more context and behavior that require a new wave of new technologies. The second thing I believe is that AI agents need to be secured more like humans rather than conventional infrastructure. AI agents are going to act like humans, and the way to kind of secure them is by understanding the behavior. The same way we have insider threat programs today, we have to think about AI insider threats. And the, some of the same processes that we use to kind of protect them both front on, on the human side are going to apply very naturally to AI agents. Due to kind of the diverse access patterns and different activities, right, again, there can't be finite numbers of rules and heuristics that really properly kind of secure an AI agent. Due to some of that emergent behavior, we're going to have to rely more and more on behavior and context to agents to provide proper um, security for them. So third, I think that threat intelligence has become decreasingly effective. Um, and the reason for that is that threat intelligence is great for stopping attacks that have been seen before. If we see an attack that uses known indicators of compromise, whether it's bad IP addresses, bad file signatures, maybe a bad email address, we can immediately recognize it and stop that attack. The challenge that we're going to in the future is that there's going to be a higher percentage of attacks that are generated with AI. Those attacks should become higher volume, and they're going to be very unique and very personalized due to the sophistication that AI enables. The challenge is if the attack has never been seen before, 
and there's no other indicators that you can kind of attach onto. We must use different forms of intelligence, such as behavioral intelligence, in order to stop the, those, those future attacks. My next potentially contrarian opinion is that we really need fully autonomous de detection response that is very likely AI powered if we want to go stop the next generation of AI attacks. The reason for that is there will be a new class of attacks where the, where that's kind of like in and out within milliseconds, right? Not seconds or minutes. And so there will be some class of attacks where we can't rely on um, an alert to pop up, a human to analyze it, to go trigger response. That will be too slow to really defend against some of these AI attacks that are going to operate at machine speed. Finally, I believe we have to get really comfortable with AI being smarter than us, at least in some areas. The challenge we're going to have is that AI will be create, create increasingly sophisticated attacks, and humans are going to eventually lose the ability to really discriminate between what is real and fake. Right? Today, we've already seen examples where a human analyst cannot successfully identify an AI-generated attack. And that's going to become increasingly common in the future. So we're going to this seemingly uncomfortable world where AI will be making kind of judgments that are different right, than what humans, um, humans may uh, do. And we have to get more comfortable trusting that the AI is more likely to be right in the future. So those are a couple you know, contrarian spicy takes. Again, like I said, I'm probably wrong in half of those, but I think these are good questions right, for us to be thinking about and talking about to help get to the next generation of cybersecurity solutions. Speaking of next generation cybersecurity solutions, this is where we're injecting our Abnormal commercial. So give us five minutes. I want to talk to you a little bit about kind of what we do and um, what makes us unique. So Abnormal, as you guys may know, um, was a, a company that we started to use AI to understand behavior to stop attacks other people miss. We're mostly known for email security, but we actually do a lot more. Um, like I mentioned earlier today, we're used by more than 25% of the Fortune 500, and more than three quarters of our customers have fully removed any sort of third-party email security solution. And if you look at any quadrant, any kind of marketing type document or analyst document, you'll see it's up in the top right, not just because customers love us and they recommend us, but also they feel very aligned with our vision of the future of email security. Now, let me give a quick example of kind of how our technology actually works. So on the right side, there's an email, right? I mean, you realize you may not be able to read it, read it but this is an email that doesn't have some of the conventional bad indicators. It does, it's not coming from a bad, a kind of known bad IP address. The email address and the domain kind of looks okay. There's no files, right? So there's no signature to look at and there's no links. You can't do any sort of URL analysis. This is the type of the email we typically see bypassing conventional security gateways. What Abnormal does is something that's fundamentally different. We don't just look at those known kind of indicators of bad. We're going to take a threat intelligence-based approach. Instead, we look at the behavior and context of that email. So we look at things like the identity. Who is this person? What do they do? Is it normally part of the job? Right? We look at the behaviors. What time of day do they send it? Right? Are they writing in kind of tone or maybe in a language that's different than what we'd expect? And finally, look at the, the content, right? Is it you know, using emotion to try to drive urgency? Is it about a super risky you know, wire transfer? We look at kind of those you know, four or five signals and 10,000 other ones to make a judgment to say, is this abnormal and is it risky? And if so, we automatically block it. So why do customers use um, abnormal, abnormal for email? There's really kind of four reasons. The first is most important. The first thing is that we stop more attacks than anyone else. If you plug us side by side with our competitors, Abnormal will stop more attacks. And we do that because we use behavior and content rather than rules and heuristics to stop the attacks that have never been seen before. The second is because we save customers more money. Right, not only do we have AI agents that help do extra work in the SOC, right, our models automatically tune, there's no setup, there's no configuration, and it's super easy to get going. Speaking of getting going quickly, right, we also have super fast time to value. Right? It takes 60 seconds to integrate, and within a week or two, you'll get a 90-day risk report showing you, you know, what the state of your email environment is. And finally, a lot of customers buy us because of unique capabilities, not just some of the AI detection, but other things we do beyond email. And that's kind of one thing that most people don't understand about Abnormal, at least not yet. We actually do a lot more than blocking phishing emails. Right? We do think beyond inbound email security, we do email account takeover, email security posture management, and we have a broader cloud email security platform. It's all built on this abnormal behavior platform that connects to different IT systems, creates behavioral models of every person, every supplier, every identity in the organization. And then we use, then we use that behavior to look for um, kind of real-time anomalies. And that's what drives our detection and response, not just of kind of you know, bad emails coming in, but things like signing events. And that same behavioral technology powers products like security awareness training. This is where we're helping to create better phishing training for your employees, rather than giving them, giving them synthetic emails that don't really, are not super effective. We take that same behavioral model and we craft a personalized coaching plan for every person. We deliver simulated examples of, of uh, phishing attacks that are relevant based on their role, their job, and past attacks they've seen. 
And it's this kind of behavioral platform that allows us to build products that do things that other people can't. And we apply this technology not just to our cloud email security portfolio, but other products around AI, you know, to help with AI security and uh, SaaS security as well. So that's kind of all we got today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know our marketing team would love for all you guys to go to our website and click on the form or something and you'll know, buy our product. Um, if you don't do that immediately, I understand. Um, but I hope if nothing else, you guys kind of enjoyed some of the conversation. Um, there's a couple of key takeaways. And I understand you may not agree with kind of all of our views about kind of how the role AI is going to play in the world, but I hope it sparks a conversation about, um, you know, those topics and kind of helps us advance and get more prepared to secure, you know, ourselves, our enterprises and the world at large. Um, so as, as kind of final takeaway, um, I hope all, I hope you also guys see that we're really trying to kind of take an innovative approach, not just in how we build our products, but you know, how we do webinars and ultimately how we want to build great long-term relationships with you. So thank you so much for joining today. Um, if you're interested in discussion with these topics, please shoot me an email, right? You know, or message me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Love to chat more. I'm really passionate about AI and really excited for you guys to join us in that conversation. So thank you again.